Welcome to the Resilient Retail Game Plan, a podcast for anyone wanting to start, grow or scale a profitable creative product business with me, Catherine Erdley. The Resilient Retail Game Plan is a podcast dedicated to one thing, breaking down the concepts and tools that I've gathered from 20 years in the retail industry and showing you how you can use them in your business. This is the real nuts and bolts of running a successful product business, broken down in an easy, accessible way. This is not a podcast about learning how to make your business look good. It's the tools and techniques that will make you and your business feel good, confidently plan, launch and manage your products, and feel in control of your sales numbers and cash flow to help you build a resilient retail business. Welcome to episode number 124 of the Resilient Retail Game Plan. I'm your host, Catherine Erdley, as well as the founder of the Resilient Retail Club. The Resilient Retail Club is my membership group and consultancy for product businesses. If you want to find out more, then go to resilientretailclub.com, where you can find out about my Resilient Retail Mentoring, which is kicking off in January for six months, and also my Resilient Retail Business Audits, which have been proven very popular for January and onwards. So go take a look as well as all the information about the membership. And if you use the code 10 podcast, that's one zero podcast, you can get 10 pounds off your first month. In addition, in today's episode, I'm going to touch a little bit on 2023, what's ahead. But if you want to hear more in detail about my thoughts based on the article I'm pulling together for Forbes on retail trends in 2023, then come along and join me on December the 21st, Wednesday at 10.30 a.m., you are going to be able to hear my predictions for what's ahead for 2023, as well as what that means for product businesses just like yours. If you go to resilientretailclub.com slash workshops slash 2023, you'll be able to sign up right there. And it's all free. There is a replay available if you can't join us live. Of course, I do appreciate 21st of December. Many of you are going to be on your Christmas holidays by then. But if you fancy a bit of a break or you just want to tune in or sign up to get the replay to watch at a time that's convenient for you, then feel free. Go right ahead. Today's episode, I wanted to talk specifically about what to do during the quieter time in your business. So if you're listening to this on the day it comes out, which is sort of towards the middle of December, you may well, if especially if you have an e-commerce business and because of last posting dates, you may well be heading towards the bit of a wind down before Christmas, you may have closed your shop or be very close to closing it because, again, with all the postal disruption, many people have been moving their last posting dates forward. If you've got physical retail, of course, then you will be busy right up until the day itself. But for many of you, you're either heading into a quieter time for the business or potentially about to head into one in January. And I think it's really important as product business owners to recognise that January does tend to be a quieter time of the year. Of course, that's not true for everybody. There are certainly businesses that have a busy January, but for many of you, it will be a quieter time. And that's okay. It's part of the normal cycle of retail. And it's also a great time for you to catch up with yourself and get on top of a few things for the business. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had Elle, the e-commerce assistant on the podcast, She shared some really great tips and advice about your website, about email marketing, about spring cleaning, effectively ready for the new year. So I'm not going to go into that today. I'm going to talk more broadly about your business and some of the things that I think it's really important for product business owners to do after this Q4, which has been really full on for a lot of people, whether you've been absolutely flat out with sales, packing, orders coming out of your ears, whether your sales have not been where you want them to be. So there's lots and lots of different things that could have been going on for you. And as business owners, it's really important to remember that we need to take rest and we need to have cycles in our business where we can kind of replenish. And that's what today's episode is all about. It's about five things that you can do in your business during the quiet time. So the first thing that I'm going to suggest that you do, and I think it's really important almost this year more than any year, is to celebrate your successes. As small business owners, we are generally terrible at celebrating our successes. We are not the best at really stepping back and saying, this happened in my business and I'm really happy about it. This happened. I achieved these things. This is how my business grew. This is where my business got coverage. This is something that I managed to achieve as a founder that may not even be related to the business. 
we rarely do this. We rarely take the time to step back. We tend to be focused on how is everybody else doing? What do I see around me? That person who started around the same time as me seems to have grown quicker than I have. This quarter is maybe not what I expected it to be. Therefore, am I just terrible at what I do? Many, many different thoughts like this tend to go on in small business founders' minds. And so I think it's important as an antidote to that to make sure that when you do have that time to sit down or maybe you're going to go see your family and they're going to ask you about your business, make sure that you tell them the good stuff. Make sure that you take five minutes to write down what the good stuff is because it's so easy to lose it in the shuffle. And actually, it could well be that there's many things that this time last year, if you'd known that you were going to be able to work full time on your business, for example, or you were going to be able to have a great pop up with some amazing brands or be featured in press or even get your website up and running. All of these things may well be achievements that, that if you looked back from this time last year, that you would actually think to yourself, do you know what? This time last year would have been so proud of myself. So make sure you are proud of yourself. As I said, it sounds like a minor thing, but it's been a tough year for a lot of people. 2022 has required different skills again from 2020 and 2021. It's required us to be on top of our game in terms of our motivation. It's required us to really think about our customers, to try and tailor our messaging for our customers. It has asked a lot of us as business owners. It's important, therefore, that you take the time to celebrate the good stuff. Make sure that is part of what you do. When you have a few minutes, one of the first things you do is you sit down and make yourself a list. Better yet, why not have a notebook where you write down things that are good as they happen? And then when you have a few minutes, you can look back at it or a folder on your desktop or some kind of swipe file of various different things so that you've always got that inspiration as to what worked and you can celebrate it. You can look back and celebrate as opposed to always feeling like, oh, I should have done more. I should have done this, should have done that. So the second point, going from a more of a mindset tip to a very practical tip is a really great activity for you to be doing at this time is to analyze your numbers. So if you do have a bit of time in your business, really make sure that you go back and you look at your year to date numbers your fourth quarter numbers, what were your sales? How did they compare to last year, to your plan, if you had a plan? How did they compare in terms of not just the top line, but also the bottom line? Can you pull, depending on your type of business, you may have automated bookkeeping software, you may be able to actually pull in your profit and loss. If you're a sole trader, this might be a little bit harder for you to get at, but you can have a general look at some of your key figures, your sales, the amount you spent on stock, the amount of stock you're currently sitting on, the amount of money you spent on marketing, if you have paid marketing, for example. Lots of different things for you to consider. And also just looking at your different sales channels. If you did events, how did they go? If you have a website and a wholesale business and you sell on other people's websites, how did they all do compared to the year? Where did you see the most return for the amount of time and effort and money that you were spending? Lots and lots of different things that, that you can look at. Have a look at your products as well. What were your best sellers? What's that telling you? Have a look at both, as I said, the whole year. Or if you have a different financial year, look at your year to date numbers. For example, well, lots of people start their financial year in April to go along with the tax year. Whatever it, the time frame is, this is still a really good time for you to look at it. Look at your figures, not just, as I said, over the last quarter, although it's always really, really good to have a fourth quarter recap and really understand Where is your money coming from? You may be surprised. You may also be surprised. I see this all the time. Every month in the club, we do a planning session. We look back at the previous month and we run key figures and then we look together at the month ahead. And there are always people in there who felt like the month was not great. But when they looked at the numbers all together, they said, you know what? Actually, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So run those numbers. Again, in the club in January, we have a Christmas recap session that we do together where we go through and have a look at our specifically our Christmas season, what worked, what didn't work. But whether or not you're in a club member and you're going to come along to that session or whether you're doing this by yourself, then just take some time. This is a really, really good time to reassess. I always say this, that one of the things about running a business in 2022 is that we have a constant stream of information coming at us. We see every sale go through. We see every transaction. We see all of this information on an endless loop. And ironically, even though we have all this information, it can, in a way, blur the real picture of what's going on. Just because you've seen all these sales coming in doesn't mean you actually understand which products are your best sellers. 
doesn't mean you necessarily understand how much money you spent on various different things this year compared to last year. Doesn't mean you necessarily understand how profitable your business is right now. So this is the time of year to do that. If delving around in this information is not something that you particularly enjoy, then try and give yourself a bit of a quiet time once you've celebrated your successes so you're in a buoyant mood. As always, if you're going to do this kind of exercise, I really strongly suggest that you ask yourself, what does this mean? So not just, okay, that's interesting, I've sold lots of these items, but what does that mean? What does that mean for next year? What does that suggest that I should be doing? So have a have a go at looking at your numbers and thinking about what that means, what the implications are for the year ahead. Because something I've been thinking a lot about recently is that knowing our numbers as we go into 2023 is only going to become more important because at any time when there's economic uncertainty, we want our businesses to be as agile as possible. And being agile really means being as profitable as possible, having the minimum amount of stock you need to do your sales goals. All of these things are really important. And the savvy business owners going into 2023 are definitely taking the time to look at their numbers and understand them. Just a side note, just to say, if you don't feel comfortable necessarily with those numbers, then you're not alone. That's the entire reason I wrote my book, which is coming out in February, Tame Your Tiger, How to Stop Your Product Business Eating You Alive, which goes in a lot more detail about the numbers. And you'll be hearing lots more about that in the new year. But just to say, if you think, oh, hey, that's great, Catherine, I should look at my numbers, but I don't even know where to start, then, you know, have a chat. That's what I do. This is literally (laughs) the reason I run my business is to help people understand the key numbers to look at to help them really feel confident about their business and to be in the best position possible at the beginning of 2023. Okay, so point number three then is kind of in line, sort of similar vein to point number one, but it's replenish your tank. You absolutely will have given it your all this quarter, whether that's emotionally, physically, mentally, a combination of all of those things. So make sure that you have some time out. The number of times I talk to people who are burning out and I asked them the last time they took time off and they can't really tell me. I think it is so important whether or not you think, oh, well, I should have done better. I should be working more to do more. I just think it's counterintuitive. And I always think about this. I think about this for my own business. I think about this for my client's business. I'm always, you probably heard me talk about this story before, but I remember reading an interview with Mo Farah and he was talking about how he had two teams. He has one team that helps him with his training, everything that he needs to do basically to to run faster and better. And another team that took care of his rest. So that team was responsible for his sleep and his rest periods and his, his recovery basically. And I think that that just really goes to show that they are two sides of the same coin. Your performance as a business owner is directly related to the amount that you can take a rest and replenish yourself. So it's a really important thing to do. Rather than worrying about the fact that sales are slow, which they will be for a lot of people. As I said, not everybody, but for a lot of people, they will be slow. Why not take this opportunity to replenish the tank, to get some rest, to connect with people you haven't had a chance to properly connect with over the fourth quarter? All of those things that are really important to us as human beings and make sure that you are in the best rested possible position, ready to go in January. I often find when I take time out of the business, I'm kind of itching to get back to it, which I think is a really positive powerful feeling when you're trying to work on your business is that feeling like I just want to you know I want to jump back in I want to get involved and that's kind of what you're aiming for but you can't feel that feeling unless you take some time out so make sure you're resting and catching up on your sleep catching up on as I said all of those things that you maybe had to push to one side another phrase that I really love and I think about a lot is that nothing blooms all year and it's so true if you think about plants you think about the natural world there is definitely a rest period and a time where you need to not be trying to produce all the time it's just not the natural way if you like and I think it's interesting many of you listening I know will have come from a corporate background I certainly spent many many years in the corporate environment and I think that's the biggest difference really in my mind between working for myself versus being in the corporate environment was that in a corporate environment, you had to perform at a very, very consistent level, whether you had illness or your children were ill or you were tired or it was a really tiring time of year. It didn't really matter. You couldn't just walk in one day and be like, oh, I'm only going to do my job at 50%. You pretty much had to consistently perform at a very similar level throughout the year, throughout the month, throughout your life, basically. 
And that's the beauty of having your own business is that you can take advantage or you can listen to those cycles and you can say, okay, I've had a very busy time and now I need to have some rest time. So make sure it's almost one of the most important things you can do to guarantee your success in 2023 is to have a proper break. Because if you don't have a proper break, you're just going to go into the year and just start feeling really overwhelmed. So you have my full encouragement to switch off, to just step away and just get some headspace. And I often find as well, you may find this too, is that I feel I come up with the best ideas when I'm not actually staring at things constantly all the time. It's when I step away that I actually come up with different ways of looking at things and different ideas. So maybe it'll be the same for you. And tied into that point number four that I really suggest that you ask yourself, and this is a question that I quite often ask my one-to-one clients, which is to just think about how sustainable your business is. Now, I'm not talking about this from a eco-friendly perspective. I'm talking about this in terms of just asking yourself, and it's maybe not the easiest conversation to have, but I think it's a worthwhile one, just saying, can the business in its current format keep going the way it's going? What I mean by that is, is it's really recognizing the fact that during the fourth quarter, our businesses, especially if we see a big uptick in sales, which many people do around the Christmas purchasing period, is it kind of shows some of the stress points, if you like. And I work with a lot of founders where literally one of the main things that we're trying to do with our work together is to try and get to the point where the fourth quarter doesn't completely break them, because it's a very common phenomenon that as your business grows, your sales will be up on the year. But then when you come to the fourth quarter, that growth is amplified and then suddenly it feels just completely overwhelming. And most of us started our business ourselves and many of us are single founders or perhaps have very small teams. So many of us will pick up the slack ourselves to kind of cover that busy time and to make sure we can get everything done and delight all the customers that we need to delight. So it can be a really exhausting experience and it's a good point to reflect one pattern I've noticed with a lot of product businesses is that when they are growing they're growing fast their fourth quarter sales which is a spike one year can suddenly become the norm the following year not always quite to that extent but it's sort of a sign of what your business would be like if it kept growing like that So uh, when I ask you to think about if it's sustainable, just think about, okay. so if I had to do those kinds of sales all year round, what would that look like? What support would I need? And equally, how are you doing as a founder? How how is how are you coping with all the different demands on your time? Uh, And and also just asking yourself with all the other demands that you have going on, uh, is this is it working for you, really? And it's kind of something that we don't talk about an awful lot in businesses in sort of small business culture is just the ability just to know when something needs to change, really. That often we it's sort of seen as this one way, very linear process that you start a business and you grow it and you grow it and you grow it, and then it becomes more and more successful. But the truth is, is that most businesses aren't like that. The truth is that most businesses go through cycles, they go up, they go down, they have great years where everything feels really good and they have really tough years. I think one of the key skills to develop as a business owner is to just be able to ask yourself that question. Is this sustainable? Is this working for me? And what do I need to change about it? Do I need it to be more profitable? Do I need it to be paying myself more? What am I going to do about that in the new year? Do I need more support? (laughs) Do I need somebody to come in and help me? Do I need more practical support for in terms of I need someone to come and help out literally feet on the ground helping answer emails or packing or making products is your team the right size is it getting giving you the support you need or do you need someone to come in and support you from more like a strategic level to help you really understand how to move it forward these are all really useful things to think about at this time as I said it may not be the easiest question to ask yourself as a founder but I do definitely encourage using this quiet time as a time of reflection not to beat yourself up about not to tell yourself oh I should have done this better but just simply to ask yourself, am I happy with the way this is going? And yes, I great. I want to carry on into 2023 exactly as I'm going. Or are there adjustments that I need to make as I go forward? And how am I going to do those? The best way to ask these questions, as I said, is, is when you've got time, when you've got space, when you've got a bit of distance, when you're not exhausted and feeling emotional and feeling everything very personally, which is what happens to me when I start to get burnt out. 
it's really just to ask yourself these questions kind of on a practical, logical standpoint. Again, not as a stick to beat yourself with, but just simply to ask yourself, am I building something that works for me? What adjustments do I need to make? Because again, we can also get swept up into this idea of growth. We can feel like we should all be pushing for growth. And if we're not doing, you know, we're not in more stores or getting big coverage like XYZ person that you follow on Instagram, then it's a disaster. But actually, it's just really, is this business working for you? The most successful business is the business that fits your lifestyle and gives you what you want. And that can look different for different people. For some people, that will be a multi-million pound business where they've got a big team beneath them. And for some people, that will be a business where they actually actively don't want to manage anybody. Uh, They don't want employees. They just want to be doing their own thing and pay themselves from it. And they are happy as a clam, as they say, uh, doing that. So I think it's a really important question to ask ourselves. And I don't know that the small business community always encourages reflection in, in that way. It seems to be like, you know, push forward, push for the, the sky's the limit. And I support everyone, especially, well, include, I wouldn't say especially, but including those who have a very ambitious plan for the business. But equally, I support people who have a really clear idea of what they want and and are happy with exactly how they are at the moment, the status quo. But just ask yourself, are you happy what needs to change? And that can really help you as you start putting together your plans for 2023. It's a really good starting point, I think, for planning because you can't build a plan until you know where you're, it's trying to take you. The final point I'd like to suggest, this is especially for any members listening or anyone who'd like to join the membership, is what to do with your quiet time is watch some courses. The Resilient Retail Club is absolutely packed full of resources. We have courses on starting your business, on growing your sales, on growing your profits, planning out launches, introduction to email marketing. We have got hours upon hours of replays of sessions from Google advertising to getting started on TikTok to improving your photography using your camera to blogging for small businesses. The list is not quite endless, but it's pretty long. So if you've got some time, this is a really, really excellent spot in the year to do a bit of a learning about your business, about the business side of running a product business, about how they make money and how you can make more money in your business. So go check out resilientmetalclub.com. There's all the information about the membership there. And if you're a member, then definitely check in and go have a look through the course portal, find something and have a watch, catch up, learn something new get yourself ready for 2023. As I said, I really, truly believe 2023, one of the key skills for product business owners is to really understand their numbers. So the more that you can do that, get yourself in a good position, the better. If you've got any questions at all, then again, just email me, Catherine at resilientretailclub.com or come over to Instagram at resilientretailclub. Say hi, send me a DM. Let me know how you're going to use the quiet time in your business. There's a quick recap then. So number one, celebrate your successes. Make sure you've got a really great highlight reel to share with uh, your family and loved ones this festive season. Uh, Analyze your numbers. Make sure you've got a really good opportunity to understand what's actually going on. Make sure you replenish the tanks to take some time out to rest, recuperate and get ready to go again. Number four, ask yourself how sustainable your business is from your perspective and ask yourself if you're building the business that you want to be building and what changes you need to make, if any. And number five, watch some courses. Take this opportunity to catch up if you've missed any sessions in in this year or to join. If you thought about joining, this is an excellent time. You always get an influx of new members in the new year because it's a great time to jump in and get ready for 2023. Thank you so much for listening. I just want to give a quick shout out to Finn and New Day Originals, who I had the pleasure of meeting a couple of weeks ago. And she told me that even though she discovered the podcast quite recently, she has binge listened to all of the episodes. So I hope she's listening today and I hope she enjoys her shout out. And uh, thank you to all of you, to everyone who's listened. It's such a privilege whenever I chat with people and they tell me that they've listened and enjoyed the podcast and I absolutely love it as well on Instagram when you share where you are listening in so do share those photos I love to see them if you are on iTunes you can rate and review the podcast it makes such a difference I read all of the reviews and I absolutely appreciate every single rating and review and if you're on Spotify you can rate the podcast as well in the app and again it all just really helps with getting it out to more people and of course if you follow or subscribe you'll be the first to know about each new episode (laughs) 
if you've enjoyed this week's episode, then I invite you to check out resilientretailclub.com. The Resilient Retail Club is the membership for anyone wanting to start, grow or scale a profitable product business. No more trawling Google trying to find the answers to your questions or wading through general business advice that speaks mainly to service-based businesses. Whether you're still at the idea stage or you've been going for a while but want to get more focused and organised when it comes to your business, the Resilient Retail Club is the place for you. With a library of courses tailored to creative product businesses, several live sessions a month and a supportive and active community, the Resilient Retail Club is the perfect membership to help you hit your goals faster. Check it out at resilientretailclub.com.